Was there a real life past or present um, inspiration for Franny? Yeah, so the seed for the novel um, was planted by the biography of Francis Barber, which was written by Michael Bondock, which I read just purely coincidentally just before I started writing. And Francis Barber was a young Jamaican boy who was brought to London in the middle of the 18th century and given to Samuel Johnson, the famous philosopher, as a gift. And he grew up with Johnson essentially in his household as a very close, beloved servant. Um, but we've never had an account of that relationship from Barber's point of view, only from Johnson's point of view. And what we do know is that Johnson apparently was so fond of him that he left him a huge legacy in his will, and also that he chased him down when he ran off to the Navy and, you know, essentially made sure that he brought him back home. And I was struck not only by the idea that someone could be given as a gift in England, which at the time prided itself on you know, the progressiveness um, and the fact that, you know, there were no slaves in England. As soon as a man breathed English air, he was free, as the saying went. Um, but also at this idea that an intelligent young person from Jamaica could have been rubbing shoulders with one of the great minds of the age. Um, and what that would have been like, that was the question for me that really started this aspect of the novel, what would it have been like to be the most intelligent person in the room where your intelligence is the very thing that's being denied? And that really sort of gave me access to Franny's character. Okay, tell us a bit more, if you don't mind, about the process of writing this novel. What kind of research did you do, if any, and how did you go about structuring it? How, how did it come about, basically? If I'm going to be very honest, I started this novel when I had no idea how to write a novel. And so I really taught myself as I went along and I made many, many, many false starts. I, I had to get it wrong before I got it right on numerous occasions. Um, and so I started, for example, writing in the third person, you know, experimenting with that until I realized I really needed a first person confessional kind of narrative. Um, I started with three points of view, so there were about 50,000 words um, of the novel from Madame's perspective, which were chopped mm -hmm. before the manuscript was finalized. Um, I started not knowing anything about the early race science that becomes a central aspect of the plot. Um, and I stumbled across that actually as well when I read The Anatomy of Blackness by Michael Curran and decided that would give me my kind of gothic hinge to hang the sort of macabre aspects of the novel on. Um, but that also it seemed to tie so well with, it, with the themes that I was concerned with. Um, so what I really did after, the, uh, I would say, a good six to 12 months of experimenting and making mistakes and ending up with, you know, a huge accumulation of words that didn't really have any shape was uh, at about the midpoint. So it took me two years at about the one year mark to look at it and then to become very technical, to start thinking about structure. Um, to start thinking about the kind of tent poles of a novel, you know, where I, how I wanted the main character's arc to develop. And I created a spreadsheet and I organized the entire, at the time I think it was 150,000 words, into a very detailed scene by scene breakdown. And I started to manipulate that quite deliberately for pace, for plot, for character development, making sure the themes were covered, making sure that the mystery um, of the murders was, was solved in a coherent way. The ending changed a couple of times as a result. And even, even after all of that, after I had done all of that work, it went through several edits after it had been picked up for publishing. So it was, um, it was really a case of learning as I went along. I think there's also a bit of magic. So when you've done all of the work, the, the exploratory work and then the technical work, there are moments of serendipity that you really can't explain when you're writing a novel. But if you stand back from the work after you've spent a long enough period working on it, you find these wonderful connections almost in the substrata. Um, 
that kind of suggest to you how you can amplify and develop some of the things that work really well that are never put in there deliberately. They always seem to come out by accident, but I think they really bubble up from the writer's subconscious. And that's the kind of stuff you can't really explain, but you sort of know it when you see it, when you're, when you're working on the thing. So I like the word magic and in conjunction with writing and how it comes up, you know, that is very beautiful. There is yeah. a, you know, writing is actually really frustrating, difficult and off-putting at times. I mean, there were moments of, of profound despair for me writing this novel when I really wanted to give up, when I really thought it was beyond me and I wasn't going to be able to do it. But, um, you know, you'd, you'd have to be mad to want to do something that was purely difficult and painful. And I think what kept me going and probably what keeps a lot of writers going is that there are those moments of magic where it just connects with something in you and hopefully with something in the reader as well. And you can recognize them. It's, it's a physical feeling. Um, it is a bit like electricity and they become quite addictive. And I think you sort of, you keep going in the hope that you'll get more and more of those moments uh, as you're writing the book. I'm sure many of us are glad you didn't give up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I didn't give up as well. But I tell you, you know, during those sort of nights of despair, I never uh, for a moment dreamed that I'd have this sort of beautiful finished product um, that had been published and put out in the world at the end of it. Because you have to, you have to learn to live with the failure of the work while you're doing it because a novel has to have moments of failure while you're writing it. Um, problems that you don't know whether you can solve um, and you, you can't really see the end while you're stuck in the middle of it. And that creates these huge feelings of dissatisfaction and despondency. And, but then, um, as I say, then, you know, if you, if you do have uh, if you do have a moment where you connect with the work, it's enough just to keep you going just for that little while until you get to that next moment. And that's what gets you to the end, really. Wow, very brilliant insights into the mind <laughs> of, a, of an author. Wow, okay, interesting. I'm just, I'm just glad you didn't give up because I love the book. So. Thank you so much. <laughs>